Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, continuing with our processing maps discussion. So, as I promised you, we will have a case study uh, in the last lecture in this particular module of processing maps. Okay. So, the case study is based on our own work. Okay. So, already we have kind of seen that there is no agreement and final word on the, on the model which can be used for generating a particular processing map. Okay. But, uh, for this particular work, we have stick to the dynamic materials model. Okay. And uh, the idea here is the in this particular case study okay, that uh, it was felt that the, when you are generating processing map, we are only using flow stress data okay, which is we have obtained from uh, hot compression test. So, you compress a, a cylindrical specimen. Okay, measure the flow stress, measure the strain. Okay, strain rate. You know that how fast you are pressing or uh, applying the compression strain to the material. Okay, so by that I know strain rate, I know the temperature, and from flow stress we are calculating the processing map. Okay, but the the thing is that uh, as we have already I have pointed you out that the material behavior is a very important factor in in getting all this. Uh, or using all these models. Okay. And in two phase, if, if any material is there which shows a phase transformation, for example, a simple example of a steel, okay. you have ferrite phase uh, uh, which is at lower temperature, okay, lower than 725 degrees Celsius. Okay. Above that, you have two phase region, okay. so alpha start to transform into austenite. Okay, and then at high temperature, okay, depending upon the carbon percentage in steel, uh, you have uh, fully austenitic phase. Okay. Ferrite is a BCC phase, uh, that means uh, body centered cubic is the crystal structure, austenite has a face centered cubic crystal structure. So, you can understand that the deformation behavior of these phases will be quite different. Okay. But when we are developing a processing map, for example, a, a, a steel sample, okay, and maybe we are deforming, let's say, from 650 degrees Celsius to, let's say, up to 900 or 950 degrees Celsius, okay, maybe uh, at seven, eight different temperatures, okay, we are covering a single phase alpha, okay, maybe a couple of temperatures. Then two, three temperature in two phase region, okay, where alpha and uh, gamma both will be stable, uh, will be in equilibrium, and then you are uh, covering maybe couple of temperatures or two, three temperatures in the austenite field, and knowing that these phases will deform in very different fashion, okay, as we told in case of constitutive equation also that developing one single constitutive equation is uh, is not an accurate or a, a good idea for all the temperature range because different phases are stable in, in, in or are in equilibrium at different temperature. Okay. So, we propose that it, we, it should always be the, the phase uh, or uh, information about phase should always be there in the, uh, in the development of constitutive equation as well as uh, processing map. Okay. So, when we are developing processing maps, okay, we, for example, in two phase region, okay, if you are in single phase, it uh, it is not an issue, okay. But if you are in two phase region, okay, now if you have a two phase, we are not sure. For example, if you are getting a high efficiency in this two phase region, so this high efficiency is due to dynamic recrystallization in alpha phase, or let's say if you have alpha and beta two phases. So, whether the high efficiency is due to dynamic recrystallization in alpha phase or beta phase. Okay. So, which is contributing to the uh, 
and to the efficiency ok that we do not know ok or in that particular deformation zone ok two phase region whether alpha phase is the dominant phase or beta phase is the dominant phase. Already in zirconium niobium align our work uh, on constitutive equation we have seen, say, seen that from activation energy calculation that alpha phase is the dominant phase ok. So, we wanted to see whether we can see it in the processing map also ok. So, to understand the behavior of these two phases in a two phase region ok, we should have uh, some new uh, country uh, some new input to the processing map ok. So, for the work zirconium 1 niobium alloy was uh, taken ok and the deformation conditions were these ok 700 to 1050 degree Celsius ok. The initial microstructure was like this extruded beta quenched ok, equates microstructure with uh, whatever you are seeing this needle shape is the martensitic transformation beta because of beta quenching. So, beta to alpha transformation is through martensitic transformation and that is why you see all these kind of needle uh, microstructure, needle shape microstructure ok. So, this was the processing map ok and uh, on and you can see that th these are my high efficiency regions ok. And uh, when we did the microstructural analysis ok uh, as I have already mentioned about a uh, parameter called grain orientation spread ok that tells you about the whether uh, uh, whether the grain is recrystallized or not ok. If it is recrystallized then the grain orientation spread value will be uh, or uh, should be low ok. So, here I am not plotting the grain orientation spread value what I am pl plotting is the fraction ok. So, we are plotting the grains which has a grain orientation spread less than if I am not wrong the criteria was taken as uh, I think 1 or 2 ok. So, grain orientation spread was taken as uh, some value that it should be less than 1 and how many number or fraction of grains have this value ok. So, if it is high fraction is high that means the, uh, the microstructure is recrystallized if fraction is low microstructure is not recrystallized ok. So, when I see in high value it should be recrystallized ok. So, what I am seeing from grain orientation spread uh, here ok that you are seeing highest value at a temperature of around 815 degree Celsius and then it is coming down and again some high value at 1000 degree Celsius ok. And similarly, the high angle grain boundary fraction ok. So, in dynamic recrystallization I can expect that the fraction of high angle grain boundary will be more ok. So, that is again uh, showing the same trend ok and showing a very high value of 80 percent at this particular condition ok. But when you see on the processing map at this particular condition my efficiency is not that high ok it is only 36 percent. Whereas, when these values are started coming down there you are seeing more efficiency ok 0.44 similarly here ok. So, somehow we are feeling that where, where we have actually two phase region. So, this this is the two phase region of this particular alloy ok this is my two phase region. So, I have alpha phase here beta phase here and alpha plus beta here ok. So, wherever this phase transition is taking place ok there this anomaly is taking place that I am not getting the, the high efficiency ok. And these are the three domains identified of high efficiency ok from the processing map. So, after that ok, so this is what I have already told you deformation condition of high efficiency value are showing good values of uh, HAGB and high fraction, high fraction of grain orientation spread confirming DRX or partial DRX in microstructure. Whereas, in this particular condition which is in two phase region the efficiency is low 36 percent though the DRX percentage and uh, expected DRX is very high. So, it should have shown a high uh, efficiency value in this particular condition which is from our microstructure we are expecting that, but it is not giving that ok. Some more microstructural analysis 
at different conditions ok. For example, at 700 degree Celsius you can start seeing a some recrystallized microstructure lot of fine grains ok, but also these kind of elongated grains ok. You can see lot of elongated grains here ok. So, some big elongated grains are there and some very fine recrystallized microstructure can also be seen here ok. And this is where you have high efficiency. So, it is partial decrease the dynamic recrystallization can be uh, seen here ok. Another high efficiency zone at 750 degree Celsius at 10 to the power minus 2 strain rate ok. Again you can see some elongated grains and also some very fine grains in between them ok. A lot of these fine grains are there ok and these uh, elongated grains are also there big uh, coarse grain. So, again some grains have undergone recrystallization, partial recrystallization is there and some grain are still uh, under the deformed state ok or maybe some recovery has taken place, but it is again uh, uh, confirming our high efficiency in this particular deformation condition. This is a microstructure at in the beta phi phase field ok at around 1000 degree Celsius or so. Okay, and you can see that of course, this is also a recrystallized microstructure only, okay. but after recrystallization grain growth has taken place. So, in our previous lecture also we have seen that when we go to lower strain rate higher temperature the grain growth is takes place. Okay. So, this is what actually this uh, if I uh, if I want to tell you okay, this this one is a one grain. Okay. Similarly, this is one grain here. Okay, and the plates you are seeing is because of the uh, martensitic transformation. So, uh, the material was quenched after deformation at 1000 degree Celsius and from there it is quenched. So, all this, uh, this kind of plates you see these are all because of martensitic transformation ok. And martensitic transformation can take place at different uh, these are different variants ok, you do not have to worry about that but it composed of one grain. So, this is a very big grain ok, uh, may be around 100 micron or 150 micron or so ok, whereas these are very fine microstructure. So, this is also a recrystallized microstructure, but uh, also have seen uh, considerable grain growth in the beta phase field ok. So, at 700, 750, 10 to the power minus 2 efficiency is 44 percent ok and uh, also we are able to confirm it from the microstructure that either partial DRX or uh, dynamic recovery or partial DRX is there ok. Ok, so now we are looking at uh, uh, the instable regions ok. So, this is one of the condition where we were seeing the instable condition ok. And we can see at that particular condition we have some crack formation is there ok. And also one uh, instable uh, re, uh, microstructure I told you at uh, earlier also that it is a called a kinking ok. So, uh, two plates are there and they got uh, kinked ok. So, kinking is there ok at 700 at 10 to the power minus 1 and we kind of did some more detailed study about this kinking that how this kinking takes place. So, this is what is a kink ok. So, you can see this alpha plates ok, all these are alpha plates ok and they got kinked at a particular uh, location ok. So, this is a single grain and in that you have alpha plates and there is a kinking ok. So, this we studied again th these are all our electro uh, EBSD analysis uh, the microstructure is through EBSD analysis only ok. So, we have plotted uh, another map which is called GROD ok, grain reference orientation deviation ok and also there is an angle ok. So, that means it shows that how the grain is rotating due to the deformation ok. So, uh, uh, there is a reference orientation and how much it is deviating from that ok. So, you can see that the all the red colors is means the deviation is more ok. So, this kinking how it is taking place within the grain is that due to deformation the grain is rotating because of the when the dislocation travels through the grain actually it rotates the grain that is how you get the uh, low angle grain boundary and then high angle grain boundary 
ok. So, it is rotating the grain ok and when the grain is not able to take that strain ok. So, there is a kind of a kinking of the plate ok or kinking of the grain ok. So, that strain which is being developed in the grain ok getting relieved through this kinking. So, if you see in this particular grain which is we have shown here that after this the very high value of GROD ok on the other side of the kink you again see it is it has a very low value ok. That means, all the strain or because of that whatever strain energy which is which was developing that got released through this kinking process and on the other side you do not see any development ok or any high value. So, on the other side it got relieved through this kinking process. Okay. So, this deformation and the accumulation of deformation within the grain creates this and give rise to this kinking that is what we, we proposed. Okay. Then there are some more defects for example, a wide formation at a higher temperature. Okay. So, from there we could see that these are the instable regions 750 10 to power minus 1 851 okay. and we could see that there are some defects present on those conditions also. So, now looking at an another uh, uh, area of uh, where we had uh, high efficiency ok that is uh, in the two phase region now ok we are coming in two phase region now till now we were looking only the single phase. And now we see some interesting thing here though it shows very high efficiency. So, I can see some recrystallized grain which are shown this with oval shape ok. But I also can see that there are some big elongated grains ok. The, so, these are all big elongated grains ok. Some grains are here also ok, uh, some grains are here also and in between them there are lot of this fine recrystallized microstructures are there ok. So, we wanted to know that whether uh, any particular phase is responsible for this kind of uh, uh, behavior ok. Uh, the only problem is that uh, in this kind of alloys when you do cooling ok everything again gets transformed to uh, one phase ok. So, if it if you are in two phase region alpha and beta ok maybe alpha is doing something beta is doing something ok. But you cannot preserve what beta was doing what alpha was doing because when you do the cooling both will be uh, have alpha phase only. So, both will look very similar. To, to uh, segregate that ok of course, we also plotted the grain orientation spread map ok. So, you can see all the this fine grain regions are showing low value of grow grain orientation spread that means, these are recrystallized grains and all these uh, big ones are showing higher value ok that means, they have not uh, uh, undergone recrystallization ok. And based on this GOS we have also separated the, the two type of grains ok. So, this is the one which has a lower GOS ok, GOS less let us say less than 1 and this is GOS more than 1 ok. So, you can see two different clear microstructures here ok. So, from here uh, 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 actually, we also uh, try to fig, uh, figure out what, whether this is a the elongated one is the initial beta grain ok and these are the alpha transformed uh, the alpha grains which got uh, recrystallized ok. That we kind of uh, uh, proved by showing that these particular grains have some transformed plates ok. During the transformation they will uh, kind of have some some kind of martensitic transformation whereas, alpha because already it is alpha it cannot uh, have a transformation. So, these grains are not showing any plate type of formation, but these all big grains are showing formation of uh, martensitic plates ok. So, through that you can say that these big one grains are from beta grains and all this very fine recrystallized grains are from alpha phase. And to confirm our uh, earlier uh, analysis ok that at 815 though it is showing lower efficiency, but in microstructure I was seeing high fraction of uh, 
grains with uh, low grain orientation is spread. Similarly, high fraction of high angle grain boundary okay. and this is the microstructure very different from the earlier microstructure. Now, you can see very large number of and the whole microstructure is covered with very fine grains. Okay. So, this is now fully recrystallized okay. and that is why you get all this microstructural parameter with these values. Okay. But in my map, I do not see a high efficiency region. So, to kind of uh, clear this or to find out the reason for anomaly, okay, uh, we felt that the phase information should also be uh, taken as input in creation of this processing map. Okay. But how to do that? Okay, that how I can put the phase information in the in the uh, development of processing map. So this is the method to calculate the flow stress data in the two phase region. Okay, what is the method? The flow stress of single phase is extrapolated in two phase regions. This is what we did in the constitutive equation also, the case study where we develop constitutive equation. Okay, so you have flow stress data in so, this is my flow stress area, this is my temperature. So, this is alpha, this is alpha plus beta, this is beta. Okay. So, I have some flow stress data in alpha phase okay, that I am extrapolating in the two phase region. Suppose, I have some flow stress data in beta phase that is I am extrapolating in two phase region and then I am taking using a rule of mixture here okay, to find out what will be the stress of a uh, composite of alpha and beta. Okay. So, that is simply that what is the fraction of alpha phase multiplied by stress of alpha phase, what is the fraction of beta phase multiplied by the stress of beta phase and so it is kind of a weighted average, uh, weighted average of uh, the two phases. Okay. And then we developed the processing map using this new calculated stress. Okay. So, this is how the calculation was done. Okay. Uh, already we know that sigma relates with temperature okay in, in, in an exponential exponential way that is why we have taken logarithmic here and i can turn that into a into a, a straight line equation okay so i can find out these constants so from there i can do an extrapolation that as i am increasing the temperature what will be the value of uh, sigma alpha for example if i am reducing the temperature i will have value of sigma beta. So, temperature is reducing in this case temperature has to increase and from there I can have sigma alpha calculated and sigma beta calculated. These are extrapolated values in the two phase region and then we applied a simple rule of mixture. What is the fraction of alpha? So, fraction you can calculate from the lever rule of alpha and beta. What is the fraction of alpha stress value of alpha which is calculated in the two phase region and that will give you the calculated flow stress of combined alpha and beta. Okay. So, these are the experimental flow stresses and calculated flow stress okay. just to see whether we are not very off from the actual flow stress values. Okay. Of course, the scales are different here. So, please be careful this is not at 45 degree. Okay. So, it is not exactly uh, same stress, if it is exactly same stress and it has no meaning, okay. then we should get the same processing map as what we are getting from the experimental values. Okay. So, these are the processing maps. Okay. So, this is our initial processing map from the experimental data. Okay. And this is the map which we have developed by after doing the calculation or calculated flow stress in the two phase region. Okay. So, single phase region we have taken the experimental values only, but in the two phase region we have taken the calculated stress value and now you can see the flow stress uh, the processing map looks quite different from the earlier one. The, the main thing is that you are able to get a very high efficiency zone directly from around 675 or so degree Celsius up to 850 degree Celsius. Okay. 
where actually we see either partial recrystallization or recrystallization ok. And in fact, at higher temperatures in the microstructure also we were not seeing any means there were elongated grains and only few grains are were showing the recrystallized behavior ok. So, that you are able to see that at those location I am not seeing high efficiency ok. Of course, in the beta phase field the high efficiency is same as what you get here because it, this is for a single phase ok. So, the main thing here is that we are able to get a high efficiency region for all the temperatures where we were able to see recovery and recrystallization ok. So, this is one uh, uh, confirmation. But uh, the still the problem is that I still do not know whether the from the processing map whether the recrystallization is taking place in the alpha phase or beta phase ok. Still it is able to show that the where the recrystallization is there in the microstructure I should get my efficiency is high, but which one is the dominant phase ok. So, for that we did a simple thing that we plotted ok the extrapolated uh, already we had the stress for alpha and beta phase separate ok. And uh, so, we just plotted the all the flow stress value of alpha which were calculated which were experimentally found up to this temperature and here what we have found out from calculation for alpha. Similarly, these were the experimental values of beta ok this is for alpha and these are the values for calculated beta ok. And what we are seeing you, you should be able to appreciate here that all these black lines are the uh, efficiency uh, contours for mm. alpha phase. So, in alpha phase you have a high efficiency of 0 0.48, 0 0.44 in the two phase region. Whereas, beta phase if you see the highest efficiency is 0 0.33 at higher temperature if you see in complete two phase region it is around 0 0.29 or 0 0.25 ok. So, uh, the efficiency of uh, alpha phase is almost double the efficiency of beta phase ok. That means, whatever uh, efficiency you are getting in the two phase region is because of the dynamic recrystallization in the alpha phase not in the beta phase ok and that is contributing to the efficiency of uh, high efficiency uh, which is you are seeing in the processing map ok. So, by doing this kind of calculation where we have incorporated the information of phases we are able to say that ok I am able to capture all the high efficiency region ok in the processing map which is the usually the problem where you have phase transition ok and also which one will be the dominant phase ok through this analysis ok. So, this was our case study uh, with our work uh, and uh, I think uh, you, you must have enjoyed this ok. So, thank you for your attention.